Hey everyone, Jared here, and I'm super excited because I just finished off the Castlevania, uh, what is it, Netflix miniseries anime, and wow, <laughs> uh, I wanted to get this initial reaction uh, done, I was eating my lunch as I went through it all, so I'm probably going to be all gassy and everything now, but I really wanted to get my uh, initial reactions, and holy cow was that awesome. Uh, my god, for years and years and years, sort of, Street Fighter animes have sort of been like my, my favorite video game animes. But this just blew my mind. You don't need to be a Castlevania fan to enjoy it, but I think you will enjoy it that much more if you are a Castlevania fan. I was floored. First off, I didn't realize that it was so short, okay? So it's only four episodes and they're about like 23, 24 minutes each. So that comes to, you know, a, like about an hour and a half, essentially, for the whole thing. So it's really not a huge time commitment. Uh, I should also mention that uh, Netflix has ordered eight more episodes for a season two. Who knows when that's going to come. If you don't know, if this is being done by Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis has done a lot of stuff from uh, Trans, Metropolitan, and Comics. Uh, he also designed, well, I was going to say designed, they're developed... He created Red, and uh, for video games, I know he wrote the story to Dead Space. But anyways, whatever the case may be, this is like phenomenal, okay? This was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this will be a spoiler-filled video. I'm going to talk about certain things I really, really, really liked. There's nothing I didn't like, okay? Uh, absolutely nothing. I, I can't say, oh, I, I, I didn't like this or I didn't like that. No, man, it was awesome. From the fight sequences to the story, to all the individual characters, was just freaking awesome. Just awesome. So, uh, let's see here, what do we got? So, I like the way in the beginning it starts and they sort of humanize Dracula. I love that, I thought that was brilliant. Lisa's in it, Lisa is his to-be wife, basically goes to his castle and, you know, you see all the people on the pikes and, well, they're all skeletons now. And she's not intimidated by that. She's like, no, no, I'm okay. And I love how in, like, maybe five minutes, ten minutes, they basically, they basically tell more story in those five minutes, or at least convey more emotions in those five minutes than they do in just about every single Castlevania game combined, uh, which is pretty damn wild. And you realize, like, Lisa, all she wanted to do was to use science for the betterment of mankind. That's it. And she wants to show Dracula what it's like to be human. You know, what it's like to love, what it's like to enjoy a beautiful summer's day, and things like that. And you get all of this in five minutes. And that's why I was just blown away, because I was like, what the hell? Like... At first, I was, I was kind of like, ah, you know, four episodes, it's only going to be 20-something minutes each. Eh, I don't know about this. Like, am I going to enjoy this? Whatever. But after those first five minutes, you're like, holy crap. And then when Dracula is, you know, off, maybe going for a walkabout, uh, the villagers and, and the church basically capture Lisa and they burn her at the stake. And she still says, like, you know, it's not their fault. And it just... It, it blows my mind, completely blows my mind of just how powerful the story was so quickly. And in that first episode, basically Dracula gives everybody a year, it gives them one year to get their house in order um, and basically bend over and kiss their ass because in one year's time he will raise the armies of the dead and take over uh, everything and destroy and kill everybody, essentially. Uh, phenomenal, man. Just phenomenal. So they took this story pretty much from Symphony of the Night. You get a little bit of that interaction with Lisa and Alucard and, and Dracula when they're when he's talking about his past. Um, there, that is actually in this, which is really really cool. And then it starts to incorporate a lot of uh, Castlevania Three Dracula's Curse, which is awesome. Just awesome. And what's really cool is uh, Sifa, I think that's how she pronounces her name, or is it Sifa? No, I think it's Sifa. Yeah, it's Sifa. So Sifa's actually in it, which I thought was wicked. And if you don't know, she's the mage character. She's like a sorceress. 
so you had Castlevania, uh, Castlevania, you had Trevor Belmont, you had uh, uh, Sypha, you had Alucard, and the other little pirate guy, little imp guy who could go all over the place. I can't remember his name for the life of me right now, but I'm sure they're going to introduce him probably later on, or maybe they won't. Uh, they might be like, ah, no, you know, having a pirate's kind of weird. But whatever the case may be, having having these two stories sort of joined together is just awesome because if you played Symphony of the Night then you know precisely how all of these things were interconnected, right? Uh, they really do share a lot in common where you had uh, Castlevania III Dracula's Curse, you had a Dra uh, Castlevania Rondo of Blood, and you had Symphony of the Night. Those three games really do come together to form like that really incredible, incredible trilogy. And it's it's awesome to see that here like it's just wicked and I'm not gonna go scene by scene and, and go into all of this sort of stuff there's a million other reviews out there for that I just really wanted to talk about just how incredibly awesome it was so like the first episode you barely even see Trevor I, you may not see him at all actually or no you do you see him at a bar just like for a little bit and he's basically given up on life like he's like what's the point you know and I love that I absolutely love that that, you know, in just essentially three episodes, he goes from being this drunkard who's like, he's given up on life because the church has basically banished them and said that you guys are like heretics and stuff like that, um, to going to where it, it climaxes, where he realizes, okay, if I don't do anything, if I don't step in, like, this is it, you know, like, uh, humanity is pretty much finished. And... It's just, it's a brilliant journey, and it's so short. And, and it basically ends with um, Sypha and, and um, Trevor going into Castlevania, Dracula's castle, and awakening Alucard. And they have this wicked battle there, and they, they essentially leave together saying that, yeah, we have to stop. We have to stop Dracula. But before that, there's like a giant... Uh, like, it's, it's almost like a, a slaughter of, of all the villagers where Dracula's minions and creatures just go out into the village and they're destroying everything. And it's wicked to see Trevor and Sypha actually, like, protect people. And you see, like, she's casting spells and stuff, and, and Trevor is, like, going all over with a vampire killer, killing people and stuff. And it's wicked. And it's really, really gory, by the way. You see eyeballs getting ripped off. You see... Uh, creatures getting like split in half, you see people getting impaled and everything else and there's blood and guts all over the place. You even see children getting killed and that's harsh. You rarely ever see that. But you'll see like corpses of babies and just crazy stuff, man. And it's awesome because it fits in perfectly within this universe. You know what I mean? Like I keep looking down because I've got uh, some notes here of things I didn't want to forget. And that's pretty much what I want to talk about, just saying how this was a brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant sort of series, mini-series, season, whatever. And I can't wait for the second one, and I love how, you know, it's almost like a teaser, if you will, for what could potentially come. And as I was watching this entire thing, I couldn't help but think of those three amazing games of Castlevania III Dracula's Curse, of uh, Rondo of Blood and of uh, Symphony of the Night and I'm like, man, Konami, you know? Like, God, the, they, they had a Bomberman game and that was like, you know, everyone's like super stoked about that and super happy about it saying, you know, it, it, they did a good job with that. And yes, it's not for everybody and, and I'm not going to get into all of that. But the point was they took a beloved franchise and they actually did something with it. Whether or not you like it, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's they, they, they did something with it, and they're continuing to do something with that particular game. And I was sitting here, and I was like, man, you know, like, oh, I would put together almost like what they did where they had the uh, Dracula X Chronicles, or whatever it was called, where they bundled Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. I would so do that with... Uh, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse and it would have been perfect to have something like that here. You know like redo it so that you got all fancy graphics and stuff and you know the way they like to do that. Keep it all 2D um, and I'm, and that's it. You know what I mean? Like just there you go, here you go and you send, um, you put it on one, one game and uh, there you go and sell that for whatever you want to sell it for 
and I'm sure that would sell, and it would have been awesome to tie that into this. And if you can't do it now, fine. You at least know that this was extremely successful on Netflix. Like, get your ass in gear and get that ready for season two, you know? It would take nothing to do that, to show people that potentially are watching the Netflix show to be like, oh, where did this come from, you know? Like, I know Castlevania, but what exactly, where, where exactly did this come from? And you could tie it all in, and that would be just friggin' awesome. And I've been saying for years, I miss Castlevania, man. I know we have Bloodstain coming out, and I'm still nervous about that. Who knows how that's actually going to uh, end up. But fingers crossed, man. I really, really love Castlevania games. I like Metroidvania games. These are some of my favorite games of all time. And watching this got me so jazzed to go and play a, a Castlevania game. Like I'm like, damn, man, I think I'm going to take out my PSP again, and I'm going to go through the... Uh, Rondo of Blood and go through uh, Symphony of the Night again, and it's like, damn, but I'm missing, uh, I'm missing uh, Dracula's Curse. Now, there, there's, it's on the virtual console. There's many different ways I can go and experience the game. I'm just saying, it would be really awesome to have all of that together bundled in one package would be so cool. So, anyways, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to really quickly talk about a little bit about the show. Uh, I just finished it, and as I was watching it, you know, over and over, I just kept thinking about that. I was like, oh man, how cool would that be to be able to play these games like on my Switch and just, you know, on the TV or on the go or wherever. But anyway, what did you guys think of Castlevania on Netflix? Did you guys like it? Did you think it was garbage, overhyped? Uh, or are you like me, you're all jazzed up, can't wait for season two and are sort of wondering to yourself why the hell Konami doesn't release sort of like very quickly some sort of package that bundles those games together to give people an idea of, of the storyline. You don't really need Rondo of Blood in there, but it does tie nicely into Symphony of the Night. And maybe, who knows, what uh, will happen. I love the fact, too, that they talked about the, the, the time element, or the time portion of Castlevania, that the castle itself may be from the future. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So I hope they go into that uh, more in the next season. But okay, that's enough for today. I just wanted to have a little video talking about this. So let me know, guys. Leave a comment. Let me know what you uh, think. If you don't subscribe to Netflix, subscribe. This is absolutely worth it. It's a fantastic show. All right, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.